Hey, thanks for tuning in. It's the 14th of July, 2020. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning, and we get to work in the air conditioning for a change. This here tub is surrounded by tile, as you can see, and we're going to need to cut these nine tile out as one unit. So right along those grout lines, I'm going to remove these nine tiles, and I will set them aside so that we can get underneath it here to do some repairs. The customer tried to change out her... Uh, wand, her shower wand, which goes down through here, and when she disconnected the hose from it, she dropped it and it slid down through the hole. Well, there is an access panel here in the adjacent closet that allows you to get underneath of this tub. However, whoever built this, and I'm not going to say who that is, because the builder has a bad reputation, but you can't reach anything from here other than the electronics. So, you got the motor, you got plumbing, and you got the electrical in the way, and we need to get over by the faucet. So we are going to go ahead and cut this access panel. It'll also serve as future use for changing out the faucet should she ever need to. Now, I have no idea why somebody would build a tub in to an enclosure like this and not give you access to the faucet. Well, I do have an idea. It looks a lot prettier this way than it would be if you had a door there or something similar. But there are ways to install an access panel and not make it stand out. And I'm going to show you how to do that because we're going to add an access panel to this and it's not going to stand out like a saw thumb. It's actually going to look very good when we're done. What I'm using here is a Rockler grout removal bit for my oscillating tool. These are about $24, $25 a piece, but they are well worth the money. This will take the grout and cut a, cut a groove in the grout and cut right through it with a lot of ease. It's a heck of a lot easier than using a handheld grout removal tool where you scrape it and saw it out. This works like a charm and it quickly sinks right through the grout uh, to the drywall behind it and it'll even cut the drywall that, that these tiles are affixed to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut around all three sides and then score where it meets the, the flooring and we'll pull this piece out as, as one piece and this will become our access panel. Now I want to tell you it doesn't really matter where you cut this as long as it's on the grout line. Now these grout lines are probably a half inch wide so I have quite a bit of play. If these were really close together like an eighth of an inch or so it would be very difficult to use this tool to cut through it. You still could do it but it wouldn't be as easy. So I'm just going to cut anywhere in there. doesn't matter whether I'm up close next to the tile or I'm right in the middle of the grout line. What matters is that it is only the grout line because this way when we fill it later you won't be able to see the transition between the grout line and the tile. If you nick a tile with this you're not going to be able to hide it. It's going to stand out. So be very careful while you're doing this and make sure that you go slow and you stay right in the grout line. Let the tool do the work. Don't force it along. You're going to see parts in this video where it looks like I'm going a little faster and it's probably because I sped up the video. And when you're going horizontally like this, be very careful not to nick the tile. If you have a design pattern like the diamonds going across this one, you might want to get down lower on the floor while you're doing it instead of kneeling. Just don't nick a tile and you should be fine during this pr uh, procedure. Now, when you get all three sides of this cut and it comes time for doing uh, the area by the floor, all you have to do is score it and it'll crack on that as you tip this forward. You don't need to uh, dive as deep like I am here on the floor. If you do, there's a good possibility you'll mess up your floor tile. So be very careful and just score it. You can use this tool to score it. Just score it lightly a couple times and then pull it out with a screwdriver and it should crack right on that fault line that you created. Maybe 
which is maybe this will pop out. All right, so now that we're in here, I see that there's an extension line, much like a dishwasher has, that supplies the wand with the water. So we're going to disconnect the old uh, hose from the wand from this extension line, and we'll reconnect the new one to it. I'm going to say this probably a couple times through this video. Before you close this back in again, always check that whatever you did underneath it here for work does not leak. It's imperative. Once you close this in, you're not going to be able to see any kind of leakage. So test it several times before you close it in. Now that I got this disconnected, we'll take the old line and we'll pull that out. We'll discard that so that we can hook up the new one. Okay, what's very important here is that when you connect these two together, if your line from your wand is plastic, don't tighten it so much that it cracks. This one here happens to be metal, but it still should only have to be hand tight plus a quarter turn. And if you're using Teflon tape, all the more power to you. Now one of the problems I have here while I'm trying to feed this new uh, hose for the wand up through the hole is that the threaded area that threads onto the wand keeps sliding down the hose. So I'm taking one of the clear bread ties that came in the kit that kind of held everything together and I'm just putting it underneath of, of the threaded area to keep it from sliding down. I'll feed it up through the hole and then I'll take it back off again. That's just so I don't have to waste any time. So as you can see I'm putting Teflon tape onto here. I'm explaining it to my daughter Katana that it's easier to put the Teflon tape on if you have the threads in your left hand and the Teflon tape in your right hand and roll it in such a way. Um, if you don't know how to roll Teflon tape on, there's plenty of videos on it, but if you leave me a message, I'll make a video on it if I have to, to, to help you out. Uh, it's fairly simple to do. Anyway, uh, you put the Teflon tape on and then this is just hand tight. Do not tighten this with a wrench. You just thread this on there and then we're going to test it and make sure that there's no leaks anywhere. We don't want to close this in and have a leak hidden behind the tile. That would be a big no-no. Okay, so we got it coming out of the one now and it's flowing quite nicely. I'm checking the connection here. There's absolutely no leaks in the supply line that we connected. I'm going to take a look underneath of here, make sure there's no leaks anywhere else. Everything seems to be dry, so we're in very good shape. All right, so what I've done here is I've cut a piece of 2x4 12 inches long, and I'm just going to screw it to the existing 2x4 that you see on the right-hand side of this hole. The reason being is when I cut the access panel, the access panel, when it goes back, has nothing to sit against on the right-hand side. So by putting that in there, it just acts as a little bit of a cleat. There's a half inch there, and the access panel can rest against that. This way it's nice and firm once it's in position. can't be pushed in. It has something solid. We don't even really need something at the top. We just need that right there. Okay, so I've installed the magnets that you would see like on a cabinet door on the old 70s style kitchen cabinets. And I need to put the little tiny metal plates on the back of the access panel so that they stick to those magnets. What I'm doing here is I'm putting a wad of silicone to the left and right side of the magnets. This way when I sit this access panel back up into here and push it into place, that silicone is going to 
bleed onto the back of the access panel. So when I pull the access panel back out of there, I know that those metal plates go just to the right and just to the left of where the silicone is on the access panel. And that's the most effective way to mark the location of where to place items if you can't get behind it to make a mark with a pencil. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop this into a place where it belongs, and I'll secure it there with a piece of painter's tape. The painter's tape will just keep it from falling forward while the epoxy dries on the back side of the metal pieces that we stuck on the access panel. Now, what you want to do here is you want to make sure that when you fill the seam with silicone, that you're filling just the void, just the part that you cut out. The actual gap, the actual size of the uh, the grout is uh, is about a half inch wide. These grout lines, they're about a half inch wide, but where I cut them is only about a quarter of an inch wide. So you want to put the tape on the left and right side of the cut, covering part of the tile, part of the grout line, up until the edge of where the actual cut is that you made. All right, so this is the part we've all been waiting for. How to make this look like it belongs there and doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. I got my vacuum leaning against it to kind of hold some pressure on it. And I'm, I pre-filled it with a little bit of white silicone that I had left in the bottom of a, of a, of a white silicone tube. Uh, usually this stuff dries up on you, so I use it up where I can, and I'm going to cover it with almond, which is what I'm doing right now. So I put the white silicone in there and threw that tube out. And now I've got the almond silicone. It's, it's both GE, 100% silicone. And then I smear it with my finger and wipe it on a rag. And as you see, when I smear it with my finger, I'm actually indenting the silicone. So it kind of looks like the grout lines everywhere else. It has that little concave uh, appearance to it. Then we're going to let it dry for just a little bit. You don't want to let it completely cure because if you do, when you pull the tape off, you're going to have a nightmare on your hands. The tape's going to be stuck under the silicone, or it's going to pull some of the silicone with it. So only leave it for about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, and then take the tape off. That'll let it set up just enough so that it's not, uh, not going to be a mess for you. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put silicone along where the wall meets the floor as well. I don't want any water to leak in underneath of this access panel in fear that a, it will can soak into the drywall that is behind the tiles that make up the access panel and eventually cause a mold issue. Or it could leak under there, and if it happens often enough, it could start rotting the structure that holds up the tub. Now, hindsight, I should have used clear silicone here. I don't know if I had any in the truck, but I should have used clear silicone so that it didn't stand out like a saw thumb at the bottom of this. Um, I did tell the customer that I could cut it out of there and put the clear in. She said not to worry about it. It's going to get dingy over time anyway, that that's where she climbs in and out of the tub. Uh, so it's always a, a very wet area. So she didn't she didn't care. Um, but anyway, what I'm doing now is I'm taking the tape off. It's been about 12 minutes since I, I put the uh, silicone into the cut lines. And... Again, you don't want to leave the tape on there too long because if you do, it's going to either pull off the silicone or it's going to get stuck underneath the silicone and it's going to be a nightmare. All right, now with all of the tape except for that one vertical strip off, I'm spraying this with an aerosol glass cleaner. Now what's important to note is that this is ammonia free. You cannot use a glass cleaner that has ammonia in it because it'll destroy your silicone. After you spray all of your lines where you put the silicone in with this aerosol glass cleaner, you go over it again with your finger, trying to match the grout lines, making it concave the way they are, and cleaning it up. What this glass cleaner does is it makes it so that as you're smearing the silicone, if some were to get onto the tile or another part of the grout line, it won't stick. It'll actually wipe right off with a rag because this stuff makes it so the, the silicone only stays where you initially put it. Uh, it's a great pro tip for you. 
All right, so just so happens that my vacuum fits into the grout line on the floor and right below the grout line that I filled with silicone at the top of the access panel. So that will hold the access panel from moving. I can get rid of that vertical piece of painter's tape and I can go through the same process filling in that, that three inch spot where the tape was. I'm gonna put the almond silicone in there. I'm gonna spray it with the glass cleaner. I'm gonna smear it with my finger. I also want to mention that when you spray this with glass cleaner, don't clean up the glass cleaner. Just let it evaporate on its own. It'll probably stay wet for 15, 20 minutes, but you got to leave the silicone alone for about 30 anyway for it to set up in good shape. So just walk away from it, find something else to do. Just so happens to be I have to change out the kitchen faucet for this lady. So while I'm doing that, this will be curing. All right, so this job is complete. As you can see, it's silicone back into place. And while you can notice it, it's not terribly noticeable. The brightest spot is on the floor right there, which will get dirty over time from water overspilling and dirty feet getting in the tub and things of that nature. So this is what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like as we walk into the room and how somebody's going to notice it or not. Not very noticeable unless you know it's there. So, that's good. Now we just need to put the cover plate back on that's in this room. And the way these work is they have one spot that moves. It's on a spring. So you just push that down to the hole, push it down, push the top legs in, and it spring loads back up into place. This is awesome. The customer emailed me several days after the job was done. They said their son came to visit, and while he was there, they told him they had the tub repaired and had you know uh, an access panel created for it, and he didn't even notice where the panel was created. If that ain't the best testament to the quality of service I provided, I don't know what is. Thank you if you're watching. Thank you for sending me the email and letting me know what your son said. It's greatly appreciated, and I'm happy you're happy with the quality of service you received. I'll see you next time.